Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Heavenly Father. O oh, King of all the earth, O oh, exalted Father, King, we thank you for another day in your kingdom. We thank you for a, a, another day to give you praise, another day to give you glory, another day to exalt your name, O oh, Father, who spread out the heavens and established the foundations of the earth, who forms and cultivates and nourishes the, 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 the human spirit. Oh, Father, we thank you for this day, for this truly is the day that you have made. We determine to rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we thank you for life. We thank you for breath. We thank you for, the, um, for your favor. We thank you for mercy and grace. Oh, Lord, we thank you for that you sent your only begotten son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who paid the price we couldn't pay, who set up the debt we couldn't settle. Oh, Lord, we thank you that we serve a risen Savior, a life-giving and life-sustaining Savior. Oh, Father, we thank you. We thank you. We have many things. If I had 10,000 tongues, I couldn't praise you enough. A billion wouldn't even scratch the surface, oh, Lord, of the goodness and mercy that you bring, Father, that you, we walk in health and vitality, strength, that no sickness can dwell in us. The number of our days would be fulfilled. Oh, Father, Lord, that sin will not dominate us because we're your children, the greater one that abides in us. Oh, Father, that we serve El Elyon, the Most High God. There is no one above you, only our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, at your right hand. So, Father, we thank you. You are exalted. You are, you are to be praised. I will bless the Lord at all times. Amen. Your praise will continually be in my mouth. And, Father, when I think about all the good things you have done, Oh, I just give praises and blessings, Father Lord. When I remember our benefits package, I will say, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that's within me. Magnify his holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Oh Lord, we thank you that you're, that you're a giving, a benefit giving God, that we lack no good thing because of your goodness. That, Father, Lord, our sins are forgiven. Oh, Father, we, we thank you. We thank you for that. That you bless us with uh, loving kindness and tender mercies. You crown us with it. Father, that you bless us with health and strength and vitality. That you give good things for our mouth, Father, Lord. That our youth is renewed like the eagle. Father, we thank you. We thank you. Oh, Lord, how, Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Father, I thank you for this day, this first day of May. Father, the year's going by so quickly. But, Father, you're with us each and every day. Father, you never sleep, you never slumber. Oh, Lord, I'm reminded of that in the 121st Psalm that lets us know, I will look upon the hills from which comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. Oh, Lord, we thank you, Father, Lord, that you're a God that never goes on vacation, that you're a God that never sleeps, that you're a God that never slumbers. Even when we're up in the midnight hour worrying, Father, Lord, we know that you're there in the midst. We can call upon you, Emmanuel, God with us, and know that you'll never leave us nor forsake us, knowing that no weapon formed against us will prosper. And, Lord, that you our God that has plans for us, plans to not to harm us, but to prosper us, to give us hope and a future. So we thank you. We thank you for the many blessings you bestowed upon us. And Lord, as we enter into this service, we pray that it's pleasing to you. And as we enter into this worship, Father, Lord, we just want to be in remembrance of how great our God is. So, Father, we thank you. Again and again and again and again. Can't thank you enough for bringing us through this week. Can't thank you enough for you being the same God yesterday, today, and forever. Can't thank you enough that you are Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, our provider. Can't thank you enough that you are Jehovah Shalom, the Lord, our peace, that we walk in peace and prosperity, that um, the drama must flee, Father, Lord. We're in a drama and chaos-free zone. So we thank you, Father. We thank you 
for all things, that you are the giver and sustainer of life. Adonai, our sovereign God, and El Shaddai, our God Almighty. We love you, we honor you, we exalt your name from now until the end of the age. In the mighty and precious name of our Lord, our Savior, our King, our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. And God's people said, Amen. 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 Hallelujah, ACC. Please join me in this worship. How great, how great 
Our hearts are ready to receive all of the blessings that you have. Oh, open up the floodgates. 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 Send your rain. Your rain. Your rain. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing. Hello. Oh, we're ready. Ready. For a blessing. Send it down. Send it down. Send it down. Send it down. We're ready. Ready. For a blessing. Your rain. Your rain. tribulations in your family. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Oh, Father, we thank you. Send down the blessings. We need peace. We need your provision. Yes, Lord. We need your perfection in our lives, Father. We need your purification power, Father, Lord, that you would create in us a pure heart. Renew a steadfast spirit in us. We need more of you, Lord. Yes. Even when our cup runneth over, we need more, Father, Lord, yeah. Yeah. that yeah. we can be a blessing to others that yeah. don't have. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Father, Lord, we, your ambassadors here on the earth, yeah. determined to advance your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Yeah. Determined, Father, Lord, to be a blessing even as we recognize we cannot beat you, giving nor blessing no matter how hard we try. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Lord, we thank you. Thank we thank you, Father, Lord, for your many blessings. We thank you that you're a God that never sleeps and never slumbers, that you are Jehovah Shammah, our ever-present God. Oh, yes, Lord, we thank you that you're there in the midnight hour. It's then that you turn it around. Hallelujah. The word says, hey, in the midnight hour, God's going to turn it around. It's going to work in your favor. Amen. Hallelujah. So whatever the situation is, whatever the problem that you have, you can cast your cares on God because there's no circumstance that's too great for our Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. We thank you that we serve a risen Savior. We thank you that he snatched sin and death. By the Lord, atoning for our sins on the cross, rising three days later with all power in his hands. Father, Lord, that we who knew we who were in sin, um, who were in sin, were delivered from sin, that we might have eternal life, yes. that we might be saved. Amen. 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 I thank you that we have a rescuing God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So we thank you, Lord. We thank you that we just hand over every care, every concern, every anxiety every worry, we give it to you. For your word says, come unto me all who labor and are heavy laden, and that you would give us rest. Yes. Amen. Amen. He said, for, 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 
Your burdens are heavy, but my yoke is light. Amen. Amen. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus, that you're our burden bearer. I thank you, Jesus, that you're our life giver. I thank you, Jesus, that you're our life sustainer. I thank you, Jesus, that you snatched us from sin and death. I thank you, Jesus, that you, you're coming. I don't know when you're coming, but I know that you're coming. And I know that today's a day closer to your coming. So I'm determined to rejoice always, pray continually, and give thanks in every circumstance. Hallelujah. If you stand in agreement with me, saints, let me hear you say amen. 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 You may be seated. Amen. Praise God. Send it down. Send it down. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. I thank all of you all who are here. Praise God. On this first day of May. Amen. 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 God is so good. God is so faithful. It's a beautiful day, isn't it? Yes, it is. This truly is the day that the Lord has made. I'm determined to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. Let us rejoice. Let us rejoice. Let us rejoice. Amen. Hallelujah. Such a beautiful day. I got outside. It was so beautiful. I said, let me water the grass and water the flowers and see it grow. Amen. Amen. But I said, even as we're watering the grass that it may grow, hallelujah, the Lord's going to water us with his word this morning Amen. through the word. Amen. Amen. I'm, I'm believing in a rhema word that would come forth in the, in the ruach of God, the spirit of God, and rain on each and every one of us that we might be filled, that we might be edified, that we might grow in the things of God. Amen. 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 We're the, we're, the, we're the sheep of his pasture. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, I thank you. I thank you that I'm, I'm counted amongst your sheep, that you are the good shepherd, Jehovah Roki. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. And the sheep puts their trust in the shepherd. The sheep puts their devotion in the shepherd. The sheep will listen to no other voice but the shepherd. Amen? Amen. 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 Well, as being May 1st, the first Sunday of the month, we take communion. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. As we prepare for the sacraments, um, I'm just so grateful that we get to once a month keep in remembrance of the finished work of Christ on the cross for us. But it didn't. But um, we know he rose three days later with all power in his hands. Amen. Amen. But I never want to be a church. I never want to be a people that does stuff because everybody else does it. Amen. That does stuff out of tradition. So it's important that each and every time we sit down, we break the bread and we partake of the blood, which is the, the, the wine, grape juice in this case. Amen. Amen. The fruit of the vine that we understand why we're doing it and the significance of it. And as we do it, what our obligation is in taking it from month to month or whatever you decide to take and partake of the sacraments of the communion. Amen? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I was going to say, let me get my glasses out there here in my pocket. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Well, first of all, when we take communion, it's important to know that um, it's a time of celebration. Amen? Amen. 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 Yeah. Our God so loved us, not only that he gave his son, but that while we were still dead in our sins, he died for us. Amen? Amen. 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 He died for us. And in that, you know, he, we celebrate. He snatched us from the bondage of sin and death. We were prisoners. We were slaves to sin. We were slaves to death. But Jesus on the cross, when he said it was finished and gave up his, he, and went down into the depths of hell in those three days. See, he wasn't, his, some people believe he was just sleeping and waiting for the third day. But no, he was doing some work. Amen. Amen. Preaching to the souls down in Abraham's bosom and, 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 and letting sin and death, putting them on notice. 
your time is over. You no longer have reign here. Amen. So, so because of that, we have the hope of glory. We have the hope of salvation. Amen. That when we leave this shell, when this shell of a body withers away and our spirit leaves it, we can spend eternity with our Father in heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. In Hallelujah. the new Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Not by anything that we've done, but by everything that he's done. So it's a time of celebration that this isn't over. Whatever issues in life and everything that you're going, you have the hope of something yes, better. Yes, yes. Amen. Whatever, you know, temporary satisfaction or happiness you have, you have the hope of eternal happiness. Amen. Amen. And joy. Yes. We're talking about the joy that the earth didn't give you, the world didn't give you, and the world can't take away. Right. Amen? Amen? But this is also a time where we assess ourselves. You see, I can't take this and if I'm cutting up and living a life for the world and conforming to the pattern of the world, you know, continue to take this and just prostitute the fact that or defile the fact that I'm taking this and you're not showing any regard and not holding myself accountable to trying to be a better person. Amen. To being more obedient to the word of God, to loving more like Christ, to being less selfish and making it less about me and, you know, being more about others. We know that Jesus first, others second, yourselves last. And that's how we experience joy. Amen. Amen. But also walking in the forgiveness that Christ and the forbearance that God has for us. We have a patient God. This week. So I need to examine myself. We all need to examine ourselves. I like to say, look at the man in the mirror. Yes. The person in the mirror. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and there's a time for, you know, correction, you know, of, of, of the things that we're doing wrong. If I, if I need to be a better giver, then Lord help me to be a better giver. You know, if I need to walk in and, and, and be a better forgiver, then, Lord, help me and give me strength to those people that I feel have done me wrong or whatever to walk in love, look them in the eye, call them on the phone, let them know and say, I love you. And this is why. But I forgive you and release it into the Lord. Amen. Amen. There's somebody that probably yeah, everyone in this room has that we could do that to. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. I was convicted this morning to do it to, to a, 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 an old friend of mine. That no longer has the same values and, you know, offended me and never wanted to have the conversation. But I'm going to reach out to him again. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Because I'm trying to be better for God. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Amen. I, I, hope, I hope we all would settle that. Amen. I see Lynn over there smiling like, oh, Pastor. <laughs> You're coming down my block this morning. Biting her lip. You know when somebody bites their lip. Anyway. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Do it, Lynn. And God, you, 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 it will release your blessing. What God said is it's blocking, it's blocking blessings. When we hold people, it's blocking blessings. Amen. And I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to be blessed. Amen. More than amen. 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 It's blocking blessings. So let me just put that behind us. Oh, Lord. Get me back on, 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 on track. The third, the third area is just an area where we have communion, unity. That there's supposed to be unity in the body of Christ. Yes, we need to be, we're different parts. We have different experience. We have different life, lifestyles. We're different places in, a, in our faith, but we're one body in Christ. We should walk in agreement that Jesus is Lord and that we're devoted to him. Amen. And as a result, I have to walk in the peace and reconciled relationship with every one of you. We have to be the modern day disciples here on the earth. Amen? Amen. 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 So as we prepare, everybody has their sacraments? Yes. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Um, in the church of Corinth, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, in the Last Supper, um, the Apostle Paul was trying to correct an abuse. You know, much like in modern day, you have... Rich people looking down and making fun of people that don't have the resources and means. You have you know, poor people, you know, having resentment. And, you know, we have black people, white people. There's, there's, there's differences in everything. 
our religions. You have Christians and you have you know, Jewish. They, no, but what God is calling us to be one, walk in peace and unity, love and compassion one for another. Am I my brother's keeper? Yes, I am. So this is the unity. The word in Psalms 30, 133, 1 says how good and pleasant it is when God's when the, God, the brothers walk together in unity. The brethren. Amen? Amen. So this is what he's calling us to do. So in 1 Corinthians 4.23, uh, 11.23, Paul was correcting this abuse. And the word says, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread. Let us take the bread. And when he had given thanks, let us give thanks. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. He broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us partake of the bread. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this is the cup in the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us partake. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for your finished work on the cross. Thank you for your redemption of our souls. Thank you that you who knew no sin became sin, that we might become the righteousness of God. Thank you that you are the veil that was torn that gives us access to the Father. Thank you that we have the hope of glory of salvation. In the mighty and precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Anybody happy to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. Amen. Praise God. I thank God from who, for who, from who all blessings flow. Amen. Amen. Yes. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Oh. I love that. Come on up here, Sister Teresa. Love that. We're going to give you your 15 minutes of... <laughs> no? Hey, man, that was beautiful, though. I heard it. That gave me chills. You go, girl. Amen. So you got the voice in the family, huh? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And my mother. And your mother? Amen. I'm right now. Praise God. Uh, uh, and you, okay. Well, we're in church. We're in church, so we're just going to say amen and keep it moving. Pastor's going to keep it moving. Amen. 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 The word says that the truth shall set you free. Amen. So we're just going to say God is good and keep it moving. All the time. All the time. Praise God. Well, I just want to say that we are a praying church. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. We stand on God's word that if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, that he will hear our prayers from heaven, that he will forgive our sins, and he'll heal our land. I don't know about y'all, but I need my God to hear my prayers. Amen. 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 I need my God to forgive all my sin. Amen. And I need my land. That means everything that you have, your, your bank account's going to be healed. You're going to prosper. You know, your, 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 your land and whatever. See, they were agrarian, agrarian culture back in the day. So when their land was healed, their land prospered. That meant that they were prospering. Amen. So whatever it is, you know, God's going to prosper. His hand is going to be on it. Amen. We just have to pray. Pray helps us, you know, prepare our hearts and our minds mm -hmm. to be Christ-centered. 
Amen? Amen. 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 So I need prayer. It changes things. Look at your neighbor and say, prayer changes things. Prayer prayer changes changes. You can look at the other one and say the same thing. Prayer changes Amen. Prayer changes but we are a Bible studying and showing ourselves a church, approved church. Amen? Amen? Amen, Papa? Amen. That's what I'm talking about, Papa. Yes. And, and, and we recognize that the Bible is the word of God. Amen? Amen. And the word of God you know, it, it's our faith builder. Amen. Faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the word of God. Amen. 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 It is our, the food to our spirit. Oh, amen. It's our daily bread, the word, the, the word of God. Amen. 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 It's a, a word that is not just here for today or tomorrow, but it's here for all eternity. The word says that heaven and earth will pass away, but God's word will be forever mm -hmm. and ever and ever. When, he when heaven and earth pass away, the word's going to remain. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. It washes us clean as of sin. It gives us discernment. It talks about joint and marrow, mm -hmm. the discerning of the spirit, you know, the spirit in Hebrews. The word is all-encompassing. Jesus is the word. Amen? In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word, what? Yeah. Was God. It is God. It always will be God. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. So, ACC, you know what we do. Let's raise our Bibles in the air. Yeah, it's weird. Like we just and, come on, let's hear it, Mama. <laughs> let's hear it, Mama. Wave it like we just don't care. Wave it like you just don't care. <laughs> if you know the Holy Ghost is up in this place, somebody say, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Repeat after me. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I can do what it says I can do. I have what it says I have. I have what it says I have. I believe my Bible. I believe my Bible. To be the God breathed. To be the God breathed. Inspired word. Inspired word. Of our Father in heaven. Of our Father in heaven. Leading us out of the darkness, leading us out of the darkness into, his light, into his glorious light. Freeing us from the bondage, us from the bondage of, sin and death, of sin and death. Into the glory, into the glory of, eternal light, of eternal light with our Lord and Savior, with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Therefore, Therefore, I walk in expectation. I walk in expectation of changing the world. Of changing the world through the renewal of my mind. The renewal of my mind. The purification of my heart. The purification of my heart. In overcoming the schemes of the enemy. And overcoming the schemes of the enemy. With truth. With truth. Faith. Faith. And love. And love. Forcefully advancing, forcefully advancing God's kingdom, God's kingdom on, earth, on earth as it is in heaven. As as it is in heaven. If you believe that with every breath in your body, then somebody say amen. amen. If you declare and decree it, then somebody say hallelujah. 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 Amen. Man, praise Amen. God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to I put us in remembrance of the last line of that. It says, forcefully advancing God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Forcefully. Amen. Forcefully advancing. Forcefully. Amen. See, this isn't a, a passive advance because you know what? The enemy's not passive with you. Oh, no. Amen. Amen. Oh, no. He's all. out to oh, kill, steal, all. and destroy. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So if you try to come passive with them, we have to forcefully advance. Right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That means wherever darkness is, I have to expose it. Amen. God has given us all a voice to call wrong, wrong. That's right. Amen. Amen. That means wherever hate is, I have to bring love into the situation. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. Whatever discrimination and you know injustice and you know and, 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 and prejudice is, I have to bring justice Amen. and peace mm -hmm. Amen. And, and fairness, equity mm -hmm. into the situation. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 
and we need to walk in victory. Amen. 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 We need to walk in faith. And we need to do what this year has been decreed. Be steadfast in the things of God. Amen. Amen. That means immovable. That's right. Forcefully advancing God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Praise Amen. God. Forcefully. Amen. 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 Praise God. From who all blessings flow. Well, we're going to get through this word. Amen. God has given me a word. Amen. And I have to say, this was inspired by my oldest daughter. She's probably sitting up back in there wondering now, oh God, what did I say to daddy? <laughs> <laughs> what did I say to daddy? <laughs> you know, but I think we were talking and I forget the whole context of the situation. But in a nutshell, we were talking about, um, it was somebody we were talking about and that they had lost in the, I think it was the and King Richard. If you all haven't seen the movie King Richard, yeah. it's about the Williams. It's a powerful movie. Amen? Yeah, Amen. Um, about mm -hmm. Serena and Venus. Mm -hmm. Venus and Serena. Serena, you know, I, I, the thing I, I, I had to call my sister about, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I believe, but I you know, can't prove it, but I know I heard it somewhere, mm -hmm. that my father, who was an OBGYN, mm -hmm. may have been the one that brought them into the world as their doctors. Mm -hmm. wow. Amen? Because yeah. he was at Compton and right. Watts and Long Beach and things like that. So I was thinking it's a small world, but I'm, I, I believe that. It wouldn't be a surprise because my la my father brought, you know, co-authored with, with God and bringing was the OBGYN of tens of thousands of people, mm -hmm. you know, over the course of his career. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I say all that to say um, there's times where... There's events in our lives where we may lose the battle. But even in that losing the battle, when you do it in Christ, you win the war. That's it. Amen. 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 There's times where I feel like I've lost. <laughs> Amen. But God Amen. has allowed me, instead Amen. of losing, Amen. to learn. Amen. Sometimes you win and sometimes you learn. That's right. Amen. That's right. That's right. Amen. So the the word that my daughter inspired, because we were, I think she was talking about a situation and whatever, and I said, sometimes we lose the battle, but it's it's a prepare us to win the war. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. And I'm gonna share this morning some of the things in my life, but some of the things in the Bible where we could see where people seemingly lost. Seemingly were defeated, seemingly were beat down, seemingly should have given up, but God, amen, amen, amen. but God, amen. so amen, hallelujah, let's get into this word, oh heavenly father, king and ruler of all the earth, oh we come before your throne of grace just giving thanks father. For another day. And as we enter into your courts with thanksgiving. Into your gates with praise. We Father Lord just lift this word up to you. Lift this service up to you. That it would be a fragrant aroma. That it would be pleasing. And put a smile on your face. Yes. Oh Lord that you would rain down your joy on the earth. And it would saturate each and every one of us. And change our hearts forevermore. Father we pray that this word would come forth with your power with your precision, and that it would fulfill your purpose, and that we would be forever changed. Not conforming to this world, but being transformed by the renewing of our minds, by the purification of our hearts, by the day-by-day -day devotion to you, surrendering all, withholding nothing. So, Lord, I thank you. Breathe on me, Father Lord, that Philip might be decreased and the greater one might abound in me, that your word would go forth with your power and clarity and that, you know, all those that hear it would be renewed, refreshed, would come to a place of repentance and would continue to hunger and thirst for your word. For your, your word says, blessed are those that hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they would be filled. So, Father, I'm declaring and decreeing right now that through this word, your people will be filled and our cups would run over and we would glorify you 
edify one another, and horrify the enemy. From now until the end of the age, in the mighty and precious name of our Lord, our Savior, our King, our Redeemer, our Deliverer, our Messiah, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. amen, amen, and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Praise God from who all blessings do. We're going to be in Matthew chapter 9 today. Amen. But what I wanted to do was ask you all, have you ever wondered what makes some people quit while others would never quit? What makes some people fold up, fold up the tent while others are going to fight to their last breath? They would never give in. What makes some people retreat at the first sign of resistance and adversity while others say, are you ready and, re and hunker down? Or how some people can lose, or apparently lose, whether it be a game, whether it be something of value or whatever, and seem to be unaffected. Maybe they're out playing with the very people that just beat them down. Come on now. Amen. And smiling and, and, and chumming it up. Reach that word. While others will well and then spend every waking moment working. Grinding, striving, growing to improve so that they never feel that way again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It made me think of, you know, one of my, one of my favorite enemies of all time, may he rest, I mean, um, athletes of all time, may he rest in peace. Kobe Bryant. Mm -hmm. From the time he was a young man. I want to say before he was 20, I remember the game that they played against Utah. Shaq had fouled out, who was their star player. And now the, the, the veterans on the team were counting on this 19-year-old rookie to bail them out. Mm -hmm. And I remember the game, you know, they gave him this, the ball at the three-point line and he shot an air ball. Air ball won. But he didn't shrink back. The next play down the court, you know, the ball was moving around. Nobody really wanted it, you know, because some people shrink in that moment of yes. testing. Some people don't want to get blamed for the, for the law. Some people don't want to, you know, have the pressure on them in that time of testing. Amen? Amen. So they gave the ball back to him again from the three-point line. Air ball. Come on now. Man, man this rookie's bold. He's shooting air balls, but that doesn't seem to deter him. That doesn't seem to, to have him cower. That doesn't seem to have him shy of the moment. Amen. That's it. That's it. So, he, he, you know, they, they go down and Utah scores again. And this, this the lead is, is widening now. So the pressure should be growing because now we need to make every basket again. But again, you know... What's in you is in you, and, you know, that's not going to change in the midst of the battle. That's why we try to prepare and, and develop and do things before, before, as our daily walk so that we're not waiting for the day of the battle. But anyway, the third time came, and they threw the ball to Kobe again, shot the ball from three. Air ball number three. Lakers lose. He should be humiliated. And I'm guessing he was on some level to be shamed. I remember Shaq and some of the veterans on the on Utah and, and everybody going to him and patting him on the back and say, it's going to be all right, bro. And, 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 you know, it's, 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 it's going to be okay. But what happened next is what defined him. What happened next is what amazed me. They got ready. They got on the plane back to Los Angeles. And when he got off the plane, he immediately had arranged for to go to a gym. Mm -hmm. Come on. And he spent 
the next 24 hours without sleep working on his game. Come on now. Come on now. Why? Because he never wanted to experience that again. He identified what were the flaws in him. He came back stronger. He came back hungrier. He came back more skilled. He came back more determined. He came back with the resolve saying, I'm going to be the greatest. That's right. And the only person that can stop me from being that way is me. That's right. That's right. What makes some people cower in the face of death while others lose their character um, others lose their character or integrity in the face of adversity. A potential loss of job. Have you ever been in a situation where you work for a company? Because I have. Where you work for a company and uh, somebody was coming in. For us it was, we were the Hilton Hotel in Back Bay. You probably know it across from the Sheridan. They built up that beautiful area right in the Back Bay. That was the first hotel I worked at. And the first four or five, uh, five years, it was owned by Daily Hotel Manager Management. It was He was the owner, so it was a franchise hotel. But Boston was prospering so much at that time, there was double-digit growth in occupancy, double-digit growth in, uh, in the rates. And as a result, revenues were pouring out and people were looking at Boston. So Hilton Corporation identified that property as one that they wanted to buy and add to Hilton Corporation. So Daily Hotel Management, the franchise, was able to sell it to the corporation and make millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. Amen? But anytime there's a change of leadership or ownership in this case, there's people that are oftentimes, they come in spending the money, but looking how they can run it more efficiently. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that means people, are, there's going to be a reorganization. Mm -hmm. yeah. And sometimes that means that people are going to lose their jobs. You know what I'm talking about, oh, yeah. don't you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. And what I saw with some of my colleagues and counterparts, not going to call any names. <laughs> but what I saw was a doggy dog mentality. Yeah, right. People posturing. Yes. Yeah, and it. people undermining. Speak it. And people backstabbing. Speak smiling it. your face. Oh, the backstabbers. <laughs> yes. You know who I'm talking about. That's right. That's yes. People would just change their ways, lose their character yes. for fear of losing their job. Dog eat dog mm -hmm. mentality. Mm -hmm. If you haven't been there, I hope you don't have to go through it. Mm -hmm. But this is the world that we live in, and you should be prepared for it. Don't say Pastor Phil didn't tell me so. Mm -hmm. Amen. But that's what happened to me. And it just so happened that my job, and I had done a good job, and the general manager had spoken highly of me, and Hilton wanted to keep me. <clears throat> but there wasn't without some days where you wondered and some days where you looked at people and just shook your head and said, you dirty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You dirty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Speak that. Yes. What you say? Yes. Amen. I can relate. <laughs> what I want to talk this morning We've already claimed that this is the year of steadfastness. Amen. Mm -hmm. And I want to talk about fighting through your adversity. If a battle is lost, keep fighting. The war is, war is still yours to seize. Mm -hmm. In Christ. Amen. In Christ. The battle is still in place in the war for you to be the conqueror. Amen. Amen. To forcefully advance God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. I want to start with, and to let you know, you see, this, if nobody is exempt from this, even our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ experienced what those battles that seem to lose the battle, but lose the war. I mean, win the war. Amen. Amen? Lose the battle, seemingly, but win the war. 
Let me explain to you. In Genesis 3.15, this is on the hills of Eve eating of the fruit in the garden, being beguiled by the serpent, who we know is the evil one we call Satan, the devil. And then she gives some to Adam. And they hide out in the garden immediately. And God looks for them in the garden. He knows where they are, but he wants Adam to identify what's been, what he's done. So he says, Adam, Adam calls for him, where are you? And it says in the cool of the of the day, God, they 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 come, to, you know, it, it finds them. And he says, where were you? And he says, I was hiding. I was afraid. And he says, why were you afraid? Did you eat up the tree of the God of the knowledge of good and evil in the garden that I told you not to eat up? Yes, I did. And by this time, Adam and Eve, you see, they were trying to cover up mm -hmm. as opposed to confess. You see, we're not designed to cover ourselves. God's clothing was on them before. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's why when you sin, you, you confess. Just come to the Lord. Change your heart because you can't cover up. He knows you did it anyway. That's right. Amen? Amen. That's right. Amen. But in that, in the cool of the day, the, 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 he said, Adam, what have you done? And, you know, Adam had changed his gears just a few, maybe hours, days, who knows, before. He said, this is the bone of my bone, the flesh of my flesh. Sister's looking good. Mary, sweet mother, Jesus. Yes, but now that they, 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 you know that they were in trouble, mm -hmm. that there was about to be a situation. Yeah, I said situation. I Amen. <laughs> Adam said, "The woman you sent me, mm. the woman you sent me." He was see, see, he didn't want to take ownership of her. Then she was no longer bone in my bone and flesh in my flesh. <laughs> you know, the woman you sent me, right? And then God goes to the woman and says, what did you do? And see, everybody's playing hot potato. Nobody wants to take the blame. Anybody knows people like that? Yeah. Okay. No matter how, yeah. how, no matter what they've done, no matter who they've hurt, no matter, they're not going to take responsibility. It's always somebody else and whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, this is what was happening in, 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 in the book of, of, of Genesis. But in 315, then he comes to the serpent. And he judges the serpent and he lets him know all the days of your life in 314, you're going to crawl on your belly. You're going to have dust in your mouth all your days. And so he, he's judging the serpent. But he comes to 315 and this is where he says, and I will put enmity, which means hate, between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He who they're talking about Jesus now, will, to the offspring of the woman, will crush your head, which means he's going to be defeated in the final analysis, mm -hmm. and you will strike his heel, which means that was a metaphor for the temporary, you know, setback we know to be the crucifixion. Mm. Amen? Amen. So even Christ, although we know and Christ knew that he was going to rise three days later with all sin in his hand. To us, it looked like a defeat. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen. To everybody there at the time, they had forgotten that he said he was going to rise up three days later. That he was going to conquer sin and death. Right. That he was giving his life of his own will. Right. Amen? Amen? But it was foretold and his heel did get struck. And, 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 and there was a temporary, if you will, crippling, although we know Jesus could never be crippled. Amen. 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 But the, the so you get the imagery of what the the, the, the prophetic word in Genesis 3.15 was saying. His heel was going to be struck. That means there's going to be some battles sometimes that appear to be lost. But in Christ, in our Father in heaven, hold on. Don't give up. Don't shrink back. Because the victory is yours. Amen. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Nevertheless, it's only a test. Hold on. I remember that was the song that took me through. It was T.D. Jakes and his choir. Mm -hmm. 
You know, when I was going through when my dad was about to die and I was trying to build, you know, uh, open a hotel in time and everything. And I used to listen to that every morning going into work. I have listened to you. I have heard your request. I've come to tell you that it's only a test. Hold on to your through your storm. Be strong. You got to hold on because it won't be long. This it won't be long. Go through. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. That took me through in my time of storm. That took me through. And God has brought me. Amen. I thank God that he's a God that never leaves us nor forsakes us. I thank God that nothing can separate us for his love. I thank God that He's the God of all comfort, the God of all love and compassion. It's in the, it's in the midnight hour that he's there at you, at you by your side. It's it with your weakest point that he hears your voice and he sees you. And he's there with you. Oh, thank you, Lord. It says, Jesus... This is, a, this is the imagery of what the Genesis 3.15 of Jesus' birth, redemption, and victory over Satan. The message I want to give you in this is, don't let your defeats define you. Amen. 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 It's not over until God says it's over and you quit. And in Christ, we better never quit. Amen. The good news is, in 2 Timothy 1 7, where God has not given us given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. The other version says and, 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 and self-discipline or, or disciplined mind or self-control. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God for who all blessings flow. If you could turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 9. Mm -hmm. I went back and forth on which book chapter story I should read but there's so many stories that I, I, I came to this one you see as we're talking about being steadfast unmovable unwavered staying put during the storm we understand that courage can manifest itself in many ways amen the book of Matthew is after Malachi. Malachi and before? Mark. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Brother Jonathan would be proud of y'all. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Lord. And we're going to, I said Matthew chapter 9. Yeah. If you're there, say amen. amen. If you need more time, say pastor, hold up. Amen. And we're going to be in verse 18. Your faith will make you whole. Remaining steadfast through the storms. Let me read. Jesus raises a dead girl and heals a sick woman. While he was saying this in a synagogue, a synagogue leader came and knelt before him and said, my daughter has just died, but come and put your hand on her and she will live. This was Jairus. In, a, in another book, so this is the stories in many books of the Bible, but in Matthew, it doesn't use the name of Jairus. Jesus got up and went with him, and so did his disciples. Just then, a woman who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak. She said to herself, if I only touch his cloak... I will be healed. Amen. Jesus turned and saw her. Take heart, daughter, he said. Your faith has healed you. And the woman was healed at that moment. Let me just give you a little context to the situation. You see, can you imagine being sick for 12 years? She exhausted 
all of her money on doctors, on healers, on people that were perpetrating to be able to have the answer, right? But, but she never gave up hope. She still had faith that one day she would be healed. That's right. Now, as God has in her life, in her situation, is intersecting with the Messiah. A man who seemed to be a prophet, by others would call him, who was healing people. His reputation for, for knowing the word of God and the power of his words and the, and the healing and everything had spread throughout the land. land. And then so she felt that if she could just get near him, if she could just stretch and fight through the crowd, if she could just get close enough, that 12 years of persecution, that 12 years of exhausting everything that she had to her name, that 12 years of, of, of wondering, is this how I'm going to perish? Is this my plight? Those 12 years, she said, I, I, I can't give up hope. I can't quit. I believe, I believe God has something greater. I believe God has, has a plan for me I be, to, to, to prosper me, not, not to harm me, to give me hope and a future. Mm -hmm. So she stretched out her hand and touched his cloak. Yeah. And, and immediately, Jesus said, mm -hmm. hallelujah. Jesus yes. The other stories let us know. Jesus said, who touched me? The other stories let us know. He felt power yes. leap from his body. Yes. Right. Who touched me? That's right. Hmm. But in this, just when the woman was subject to bleeding, 12 years came behind her, touched her, the edge of his cloak. She said to herself, if only I could touch his cloak, I would be healed. Jesus turned and saw her. Take heart, daughter, he said. Your faith has healed you. That's it. Has healed you. And the woman was healed at that moment. Mm -hmm. Woo! Mm -hmm. You talk about a blessing. Okay. Yes. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. You see, she could have given up. She could have given in. She could have just, you know, the, 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 wallowed in her sorrow, mm -hmm. thinking that, but she believed more for God. She, were, right. she stayed steadfast. That's right. You see, this is one of the ways the courage in being steadfast manifests itself. To believe when the world says you shouldn't believe. That's right. To have uncommon That's belief. Right. When everybody else says you should give up, when everybody else tells you you should shut up, I'm talking about Bartimaeus now is the blind man. He was saying, son of, son of David, help me, I need help. Shh, shh, shh. You know, his friends are saying, shh, you're embarrassing us. Mm -hmm. Hey, bro, I'm blind. You think I care whether you embarrass us? Right. And there's my chance to see. He right. said he's going to scream all the louder, son of David, help me. Oh. Jesus came over to him. Said, what do you, what do you want? You want to see? Oh, your prayer. Your faith has made you whole. Amen. And he saw. Amen. Amen. Shoot, I would have left those friends. Like, you, you lost your mind. <laughs> right. Think I care whether you embarrassed. I'm blind and this is my chance to get. We got to show faith. Look at your neighbor and say, be steadfast. Be steadfast. Be steadfast. Be steadfast. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise God. You see, in just the next chapter, Jesus gives us a, 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 a warning in, 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 in Matthew 10, verse 16. And he says in that, um, it, the, the, the word says, behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. So he's letting us know as his, as his disciples, as his modern day disciples, we're in a world of wolves. Amen. Amen. But he sends us forth Amen. as sheep. But what was his warning? What was Jesus's counsel to, to us? He said, be ye therefore wise as serpents. So you, you got to know how the enemy's thinking. Shrewd. Shrewd. Yeah. Shrewd as be as wise as serpents. So the, the enemy's shrewd. The people of the world are shrewd. Yep. They're going to know how to get over on you. Yep. They're going to know how to keep you down. That's right. They're going to know how to, you know, how to destroy you and crush you. 
So Jesus tells us, be ye therefore wise as serpents. My wife said true. Pastor Ingrid said true. And Jesus says, and harmless as doves. Amen. Amen. So, I, so, so, so he's giving us the warning. We have to be shrewd and understand where they're coming from. But we, we can't operate and take on their character. Amen. He's calling us to a high, higher standard. We can't adopt the same things that they, that they do. You have to be courage to walk in that. You see, you have to operate in, <clears throat> in, 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 in a different mode. In the, in, the, in the humility and meekness and strength of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. 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 What I want to do now is talk about some of the heroes and steadfast. Can we talk about Joseph? Mm -hmm. Joseph, you know the story of Joseph in Genesis. Joseph was, was, was Joseph was given visions. And in Joseph's visions, the first vision was he was he saw these stalks of wheat and 11 stalks which were his brothers bowed down to the stalk that was him. Mm -hmm. Right? And then God gave him another vision. And in the second vision, he saw the sun and the moon, and they bowed down to him and, 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 and 11 stars. And they bowed down, and he shared this story with, you know, his brothers. And they were like, who's this dude thinking we're going to bow down to him? Right? But God had given him a vision of what, that he was going to be exalted, that God was going to use him to be a blessing, that people would bow down to them, that he would be in a place of authority. But in that vision, you see, there was going to be some times of setbacks. There were going to be some times where the battle seemed lost. There were going to be some times where it appeared there was feet, defeat. There were some times where I know he had to question the very vision that God had given him. Yes, yes, yes. First, he was cast into a pit. Mm -hmm. And that by his brothers. Mm -hmm. So it's one thing to be betrayed. But it's a whole nother thing to be betrayed by the people that are supposed to love you and care for you Amen. and tend to you the most. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thrown into the ditch while they conspired and contemplated, what should we do with them? Some of them said, let's kill them and get rid of them. Other, the, I think it was his brother Reuben who was the oldest. said, no, nah, we can't do that, brothers. You know, no. Uh-uh. Let us... You know, let us, you know, see if we, you know, they saw, they saw some travelers coming in the way that looked like they were on their way to Egypt. You know, Midianites, the words, the word lets us know. And these Midianites, they, they, they said, let us sell him into slavery. So just imagine, one time you have a vision, things are bowing, bowing, bowing down to you. In the next reality, you were slaves. You doing the bowing down. Amen. But God still had him. God still ordered his steps. He was sold to Potiphar, one of the high ranking officials in Egypt. And Potiphar recognized Joseph's excellence because Joseph was uh, a, a proficient in administration and in organization and being able to, you know, yield the greater profit and things like that and manage an organization. So very soon, Joseph rose to the position of caring and managing over all of Potiphar's house. And Potiphar prospered. He was growing in wealth and he knew it was Joseph and the wisdom and that he had God's favor over his life. Right. And Joseph rose to the towards the top position in the household, entrusted with everything of Potiphar's, mm -hmm. except his boo. Mm -hmm. But his boo had different plans. Yeah, Miss Potiphar. We'll call her Miss <laughs> Potiphar. Uh -huh. Yeah, she had some different plans, you see. I don't know, because I, what, I, what I suspect in the story is sometimes, you know, the older men married the younger women. But, you know, I'm just keeping it real. Sometimes the younger woman had needs that the older men couldn't fulfill. Right. So as a result, she looked at Joseph and she said, Ooh, wee. 
hey, who's this young fine stud up in my household? Mm, tell you what I'm going to do. While Potiphar's away, I'm going to throw him some game and see if he'll bite. Right? So we know she tried to do that on a, a few occasions, and Joseph was saying no and thought, was hoping that his, you know, the, the, resisting would lead to her not being so relentless in pursuit of him, but it didn't work. One day, Potiphar was the way she knew, probably checked on him. Honey, you know, got on the cell phone, you know, <laughs> said, honey, what time you coming home? Just want to see what time dinner's going to be ready. Y'all know what you do, you know what I'm saying? You know, want to see what time dinner? Oh, you said six o'clock? Okay. Mm-hmm. And Joseph came to do his normal duties. You know, to clean room, whatever. And she threw us some game and she was determined this time she was going to not be turned down. And you know, Potiphar's wife had to be fine. And you know, she had to have some money. And you know, but Joseph knew he, who he served. Amen. Amen. Joseph Amen. remained steadfast. But Potiphar's wife tried to seduce him, and he was like, no, I can't do this to my master. Potiphar, he's been so good to me. He trusted me with everything. I can't do this. Help, Jesus. And he runs off. And she's trying to hold on and pulls his clothes off, and now she's mad and humiliated because, you know, <laughs> ain't nothing worse than a woman whose hormones are out of control, and, then she, and, they, and, and they can't be pacified. You know what I'm saying? Oh, man. You sh please. <laughs> Nothing worse. So she says, oh, I'm going to get him. I'm going to get him. I got something for him, and she lies on him. So now Joseph is cast into the into prison. Potiphar gets home and says, you trying to pull up on my boat? You tripping. I've been good to you now. And he ends up in jail. Cast him. But she see Joseph remains steadfast. Look, say, say steadfast. Stay steadfast. Stay, stay, steadfast. Amen. Steadfast. And in that, we know he went to prison. We know the story about the butcher and the, and the baker. Amen. Yeah. We know that, and, and, and we know. <laughs> and what and, and, and what ends up happening? Joseph remains steadfast, but God hadn't forgotten him, and he didn't have forgotten God. And God took him from being the prisoner to the prince Amen. in all of the land. Amen. You see, you got to stay steadfast. Amen. Amen. There's going to be some battles that you might lose, right. but God will give you the victory. Yes. Amen. 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 I'm not done. I'm just getting started. I could talk about Job, but for time's sake, I'm going to move on to Esther. Amen. Yes. Amen. We know the story of Esther. There was a... a, a, a a, a wicked man that had raised uh, had come into power. His name was Haman. And Haman, in the history, you know, the history of Haman's people were conquered by the Israelites earlier. <clears throat> so in the back of his mind, you know, he had a disdain for Israelites and the Jews who were now part of the kingdom of Assyria. Assyrians had conquered them. And they brought them to their land and they were subject, they were part of the province of, you know, of that they were that they were living in. And when Haman came to be second in power only, you know, to um, to the Art Artaxerxes, the Pharaoh, he did a decree in all the land and got Artaxerxes buy-in that the Jews were, were, were people that didn't, the Israelites were people that didn't bow down to him, they bowed down to God because it was Mordecai. It was only Mordecai was the one that, but he did a punishment to persecute all of the Jews, all of the Israelites. And this was going to happen within a year's time, that by this date, they would all be slayed and, and, and persecuted. Mordecai, Esther's uncle, who had taken her in, you know, when her parents were no longer, he went to and appealed to her. This You were called for such a time as this. You were called for such a time as this. And Esther, with the decree and edict of the persecution of her people and all of the Israelites in the land, 
She stared in the face of death. But she sought God, called for a corporate fast of three days, prayed, petitioned God for courage and his favor. And after those three days, she went before Artaxerxes. You, you couldn't go before the Pharaoh unless he summoned you. And he would have to extend mercy. And if he didn't extend his golden scepter as mercy, then you would die. That's why she was in the face of death. But despite all of that, she knew she had a greater calling for her people. She knew she had sought God. She remained steadfast. Amen. 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 And after these three days, Pharaoh Artaxerxes extends the scepter, so she says, oh, he's happy to see her, because that's his wife. For whatever reason, he didn't see his wife, because there's many women around for a month, you know, like a month. And anyway, he was happy to see her and said, what can I do for you? I'll do anything up to half the kingdom, you know, is yours. And this is where Esther, you know, God orders her steps and gives her wisdom. And the very plot that Haman had to destroy Mordecai and the Israelites mm -hmm. was turned against them. And the snares, the traps, and the pitfalls that he had set for the Israelites, <laughs> um, Haman ended up being hung by the very thing he had built to hang Mordecai. And Artaxerxes changed the, law, the laws of the land. He, he broke that decree saying that the Israelites we're free, and this is where you get the holiday of Purim, even today. Amen. 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 But Esther remained steadfast. It seemed like the battle was lost. It seemed like the people were left for dead. But God. But God. But God, you got to stay, hold on. Can we talk about Daniel, somebody? <laughs> Daniel was a devout, faithful man. And in Daniel chapter 5, the word tells us that he was one of three people, the administrators, they were called, in all of the, the kingdom of Babylon. But in Babylon, J Daniel had so distinguished himself as being excellent and being efficient with all of, of the, the, the resources of the land that Darius, the king, was going to make him the sole person over everything. But the other people didn't like this. The other administrators, and in fact, let me call them administrators, okay? Because they were hating on them. All right? You know, when you're doing well and when you, you know, people jealous of you and people, in, you experiencing that at work? You know, you, 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 I hope not. You know, where people, you know, see you on the rise. Oh, I should get the promotion. I thought that was me. I've been here longer. Yeah, but you ain't doing your job like she's Amen. doing. Amen. 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 Say that. That's right. Praise God. Yeah. You know, so they were hating on, on Daniel. And trying to, they, 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 and they were looking for ways to undermine him. The word lets us know, Amen. but he could, he he was, but Daniel was he was was tight in all his ways. He was an ethical man. He did right by the king. He did everything by the book. He honored God. He was a kind person. He was a fair person. He he yielded more profit than any of them. They couldn't touch Daniel. That's it. Amen. That's it. So what they, but what they, what so what they do is what the world does. When the world can't beat you, they're going to change the rules. Sell, sell. Amen. They're going to move the finish line. That's right. Amen. That's right. They're going to make the throw some obstacles in your way so that's that, right. you know, so that the playing field is uneven. That's right. Amen. Amen. And this is what they tried to do with Daniel. Hallelujah. Daniel 6, 6 5 says, We will never find any basis for changes, for, for charges against Daniel. Unless it has something to do with the law of his God. Amen. So what? Amen. Yes. Daniel was a devout, steadfast man. You see, they knew they couldn't catch him in anything unless it had to do with him serving God. So what they came to Darius, the king, to say is said, oh, you know, we, we want to make a law that over the next month, nobody can pray to any other God but oh, you, Darius. See, God. making him feel like he was exalted, like they were for him, like they, you know, were, you know, team Darius, yeah, you know, all, all in. But really, they were trying to cut Daniel down. Amen. Exactly. See, that's how the enemy will work. Exactly. Again, yeah, smile yeah. in your face. Right. All the time they want to take your place. 
the backstabbers. Amen. So what happened? They said, make a decree that whoever violates or breaks this law and prays to another somebody other than you will be thrown into the lion's den. Yes. And they got, they said, write it down so it's in the law of the Persians and Medes and it will be decreed because we love you so much, Darius. You know people like that? Yes. Brown nosing brown the boss, yes. trying to get in good. Trying to get information and seem like they're loyal, but really, they're just afraid. Really, they just cowardly. Really, they just don't have anything going for them. So they have to improve themselves by knocking somebody else down because they can't stand on their own two feet. Amen? Oh, come on, Lord. Yes, come on. Hallelujah. Come on now. So what they did, they after he signed it, they know Daniel. It says, look to the west. Let's assume this window's the west. And it said three times a day, he would get down on his knees and pray to God looking towards Jerusalem. Oh, come on. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. All right. And they caught him praying and they were only too happy, you know, to go tell King Darius. King Darius, it upsets us so that we have to bring you this news. But your, your, your servant, Daniel, we caught him praying, and you know what your, law, your rule says, unless we remind you that your rule says that whoever breaks that will be thrown into the den of the lions. Oh, come on now. Hallelujah. But what they didn't realize is how God is for you. Who can be against you? Hallelujah. No weapon formed against me will prosper. Oh, yes, Lord. So, you know, King Darius, it said, the word says that he was distressed because he knows that Daniel was a loyal subject to him. That despite being, uh, you know, Israelite and he was a Medo-Persian, Daniel had always done right. Daniel was faithful to him. Daniel allowed him to oh, prosper wow. as king. Daniel, you know, was always respectful. Did whatever he asked. Amen. Amen. And that, but Daniel, but he had to, he, he had to follow the laws and what he did. Amen. Hallelujah. What he had done was he had to put Daniel in the, in the lion's den. As much as he tried to get around it and couldn't do it, his word was his word, it was in writing, couldn't break the law. Amen. So Daniel's in the lion's den, but what they didn't know is, ha, there's somebody that can control the mouth and the appetites of the lions. Uh -uh. Uh, <laughs> what they didn't know is when you're in the face of death, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, <laughs> for he is with me. His rod and his staff, they comfort me. Hallelujah. He prepares the table in the presence of my enemies. Hallelujah. My cup running over. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will, yes. I forgot the I forgot anoint my head with oil. I was getting so excited. Yes, God has you. It's during your times. It's during. It's when you're at your lowest. It's when death seems imminent. It's when things are dead. Just hold on. Right. Just call on the name of the Lord. He won't let you go. Early that next morning, at the before the sun came up, I'm believing Darius ran down there to the to the den and read and yelled to him. Daniel, Daniel, and what did Daniel say? Oh, King Darius, may you live forever. Uh -uh. Come on, now. yes, what my God say? has delivered me. Yes. Hallelujah, yes. Yes. my God's a rescuing yes, God. My God's a delivering God. Right. My God's a saving God. Right. My God is the yes. true and living That's God right. in the earth. He created the lion. Right. Hallelujah. Uh, he put you in authority to be That's king. Right. Amen. That's right. Hallelujah. That and what and what and what happened? Hmm. They took Daniel out of the den, and those very men that tried to trip him up, they were put in the den. And the moment they hit the ground, those lions pounced on them and had them had breakfast that morning. That's right. Amen. That's right. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, steadfast. Stand fast. Stand fast. Stand fast. Hallelujah. I want to give you some keys to living the steadfast, victorious life. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. 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 We're about to close this up. All right. Amen. The first number one. Oh, yes. Prepare for victory. We have to prepare for victory. What do I mean by that? What do you, you want to say, Pastor Phil? Prepare for victory. That means don't wait for the day of battle. Preparing for victory is a daily charge. Right. Every day we Word. need to deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow Jesus. Every day I need to put on the whole armor of God, Ivy. That's right. The whole armor of God. <laughs> yes. Have my belt to truth. And my breastplate of righteousness. Right. Hallelujah. Have my feet shod with the gospel of peace. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And yes, I, don't forget your shield of faith. That's right. Amen. We need a shield that's impenetrable. We need a shield that's going to cover us from head to toe. That's because right. the enemy is shooting his fiery darts at you. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And then, yeah, don't, your helmet of salvation. Hallelujah. You got to cover your head. Hallelujah. We have a helmet your size. Don't worry about it. Oh, yeah. Your helmet of salvation. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. And yes, oh, Lord, we thank you that we have our word, which is our sword. I'm not talking about one of them butter knives that you get, you know, at Star Market in aisle 19. You know, that will crack the minute you walk out the store with it. If the wind blows the wrong way. I'm talking about a sword that's like a samurai or a machete that will cut your enemy up. That's it. If he even looks at you the wrong way. That's right. Amen. That word, when we're in our word daily, when we're hearing the word and building our faith, when we're growing in, in the scriptures and in the word of God and it transforming our lives and transforming us not to where we conform to the pattern of this, to this, of this world, but transforming and renewing our minds and our hearts for Christ Jesus. That's what I'm talking about. Amen. That word that brings transformation. And then it says, and pray in the spirit in every circumstance. Hallelujah. That's the armor of God that I'm talking about. You have to prepare on a daily basis. That's right. Amen. And if we do, when the, when, the, when the battle comes to you, when the battle's nigh at your feet, when the storm is, is it, it, right, has come, you'll be ready. You don't have to trip. You don't have to go run and ask somebody, can you borrow? You might need to get some, some of your troops together so they can go in, amen? Go in with you and encourage you, but God has given you everything you need. Prepare for victory. Amen. Prepare for victory. Number two, dedication to the will of God in Romans 12, 1 and 2. Hallelujah. One of my favorite scriptures. Amen? Amen. Amen. Romans 12, 1 and 2. You all already know. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, mm -hmm. holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. I like the King James that says, this is your reasonable sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Then number two says, verse two says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Amen? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Number three. We must put off all excess baggage, burdens, things that aren't of Christ Jesus. No more drama, like Mary would say, amen? No more pain. Never talking, ne ne put away negative talking, put away negative thinking. If you could just go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, I'm going to read it to you, verse 5. We destroy arguments in every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God. And take every thought captive to obey Jesus Christ. That means you have to get rid of your stinking thinking and, and replace it with godly thinking. That means you need to get rid of your negative, weak, shrinking back, coward thinking and walk as the conqueror and the person that's in dominion authority that God has given you. He's given us the authority to trample on scorpions and serpents. Amen. He's given us authority from the foundations of the earth of the earth be fruitful multiply fill the earth subdue it 
That means take control of it Amen. and take dominion authority over it. God has given it to you. Why are we why are we sitting back passively? No, we need to forcefully advance the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Also, you can go to Philippians 4, 8, and 9 for that, for that number three. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'll give you three more. Refuse to give doubt. Number four. Number four. Refuse to give doubt, fear, unbelief, defeat, and sin any place in your lives. Amen. In a nutshell, refuse to give the devil a foothold. Amen? Right. Amen. First Timothy, sec, excuse me, 2 Timothy 1 and 7. For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Or self-control, depending on which version of the Bible you're reading. Number five, don't give up. Don't ever give up. Turn in your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 3. Oh, we're, I'm going to go there quickly. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 3. Amen? Amen. Amen. I hope you're getting something out of this because it ministered to me. Amen. 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 In chapter 12 of Hebrews, verse 1, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, mm -hmm. let us throw off everything that hinders Amen. and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Fixing our eyes on who? Jesus. Mm -hmm. The pioneer and perfecter. I like the author and the finisher. Amen. But the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. That means in my time of weakness, in my time of pain, in my time when I'm feeling like giving up and giving in and quitting, I need to think about Jesus on the cross. And when I do so, hallelujah, I can say he, did, he finished it to the end. He said it is finished. And it, was, it wasn't until he was finished that he gave up his spirit to God. Amen. But we know he rose three days later with all power in his hand. And because Jesus didn't quit on me, I'm not going to quit on Jesus. Amen. Woo, that's number five. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. Hebrews 12, 1 through 3. Mm -hmm. And the last that I would give you is in Isaiah 41, 10. Mm -hmm. And this is God's reassurance that he has you. So that you should never give up. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. Mm -hmm. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Oh, God has you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Like I said, no weapon formed against you will prosper. Your, our daddy is greater than all. Amen? Amen? And if you just hold on tight, if you just stay steadfast in the things of God, right. he'll never fail you. He's never failed me yet. Mom, Marion, we've come this far by faith, leaning, leaning on the Lord, trusting, trusting in his holy word. He's never failed, He's never me, failed me yet. Amen. Just know that God has you. Just put him in remembrance of his word in Isaiah 41.10 and know that you have the victory in Jesus. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray that this word has gone forth and fulfilled the purpose that you've ordained. Father, we pray that this was pleasing to you. We pray that this word will edify, feed, strengthen, and encourage my brothers and sisters. And most of all, I pray that you have been glorified, we have been edified, and the enemy is now horrified. Amen. At how we will go forth in forcefully advancing your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. We do it all to your glory. In the mighty and precious name of our Lord, our Savior, our King, our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Powerful word, Pastor Phil.
preach to me today, I tell you. Amen. Well, ACC, you all know what time it is. Amen. 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 We are so grateful. It's a beautiful day. Amen. Look what the Lord has done for us. Amen. Amen. It's wonderful to see your beautiful faces up in here. Little David is always great. Thank you, sweetheart. Take your notes. Okay. Okay. Um, just wanted to say thank you to our ACC family for always showing up and showing out. We wouldn't be able to do what we do, advancing God, forcefully advancing God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven without our ACC members and, and family. So we thank you all. I want to thank, you know, um, Kurt Schroeder. I want to thank Daphne Tube. I want to thank Dale Tube. I want to thank Sylvia and Brad Owens. I want to thank Kareen and Kelvin Hurdle. I want to thank the... Wickham family. I want to thank Kim and Lisa Cabote. I want to thank Kai Gavin. I want to thank all our Spellhouse family. I want to thank all of you who continue to make this possible. If you are watching today and you are led to, you know, by the Holy Spirit to give, um, we ask that you tune on, turn on, go to our website, which is www.awakencc-bos.org and click on the give button. We always, always say, God loves a cheerful giver, so whatever's in your heart, that's between you and God. Um, and if it's not, we pray that you are blessed. That's the important part, that we will do this regardless of, you know, what happens in terms of giving, because we are fulfilling what God has called us to do, which is to advance his kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. So we're so thankful to all of you um, for tuning in. We realize it's a beautiful day, beautiful day in Boston, and... That happens so rare <laughs> this time of year. So um, if you're watching and you're here in Boston, we thank you. If you're watching from all over the world, we thank you. And we ask that you continue to tune in because our, our, our role is to make sure that we are being the disciples that Jesus Christ has called us to be. Amen. And the mission of our church is to awaken people all over the world to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Actively transform and love uh, lives through love, labor, teaching, and preaching of the word in praise and worship. Amen? Amen. 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 So we thank you. And what I'd like to do now is just um, read our confession of tithing and um, ask if you're able to stand, uh, please stand. And I promise we're going to get get up out of here. Uh, you know, I know whenever we have communion, it's a little bit longer, but that's all right. The Holy Spirit was up in here, up in here. And that's what we're going to do is just to continue to uh, bring the word of God forth as, as the Lord has challenged us to do. Amen? Amen. Amen. Our confession of tithing. We are cheerfully sowing our seed into ACC in the kingdom of God. As sons and daughters of Abraham, we've been blessed to be a blessing. Therefore, we will sow our seed with expectation that we will reap a harvest 30, 60, and 100 fold. We recognize that we cannot beat God's given no matter how hard we try. Therefore, we will honor the Lord with our wealth and the first fruits of our crops, that our barns will be filled to overflowing, and our vats will brim over with new wine. Amen. Amen. Amen, Amen ACC. Y'all know this. Y'all know not this. Y'all know this. Amen. Amen. And we thank you all once again. Thank you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just ask that you bless those that give and bless those who want to give but were unable to. Allow us to continue to be great stewards of you as we want to advance your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven through the faithfulness of those that have given. Lord, we thank you for what you're doing in the group, ACC, and we ask that you just continue to bless us. In the mighty and precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 And amen. amen. You may be seated. I promise the announcements will be quick so we can wrap up and you all can enjoy this beautiful day. Um, we are a Bible-believing, um, praying church, showing ourselves approved, and um, we start off our week, Sunday starts the week with service, but Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we have uh, morning prayer with Pastor Phil, Lady T, um, Sis Sister Pinky, and, and Mackenzie, they're always on the line. That is uh, at 5 o'clock in the morning on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 5 to 5.30ish. We have um, a Radical Faith um, Prayer Circle, Transformation Prayer Circle, which is offered by my daughter, Pilar, uh, at 6.30 on Mondays. That is for women, and that's a great time for women to get together and lift one another up. 
We also um, have prayer on Saturdays, which is when our uh, mom, Miriam, and Pastor Phil do corporate prayers. So we, you know, ask that you all join any of those prayer circles. On Tuesday nights, we've got the guys, the gentlemen who are um, iron sharpens iron. That's from the men from the East Coast to the West Coast. And that starts at 9.30. Pastor Phil leads that. Um, it's a powerful time. On Wednesdays, the third Wednesdays of every month, um, we have uh, future Pastor Ivy, who does a wonderful work, work on Wisdom Wednesdays, and that is delving deeply into Proverbs, which I love Proverbs. We also have, um, on, on Thursdays, obviously, we have our ACC Bible study, which is amazing. And most of us who are um, in, here in the sanctuary watching tune into that as well. That is at 7.30, typically from 7.30 to 9.00. And it's wonderful to have people who are not just in ACC, but from, from all over tuning in as well. Fridays are our days off, you know. That's a time for us to spend time um, with our families and just to regroup so that we can begin again. Uh, on Saturdays, uh, Pastor Phil and I are available. I typically will have on the last Saturday of the month, uh, Empower Her, which is a wonderful group. We had an awesome time yesterday. I think there were about nine or 10 of us on, on Zoom yesterday, and it was powerful. And I want to thank my sister, my prayer sister circle, you know, the um, who gets together every day except Sundays, Saturdays and Sundays, to pray. It was wonderful having you all online. We had a very rich conversation, and I thank um, uh, my spiritual daughter, Ivy, for really coming through and helping. You know, it was just a, it was a rich time. It wasn't just me talking. It was uh, all of us sharing our our, our testimonies and very rich, um, Corrine and uh, Yvette and Nicole and um, I'm trying to think who else was on from the Jasmine. sisters. To, yes, Jasmine was on. We had a, a good group of women on and we look forward to doing that. And it's a, it's a great safe space for us to be, be able to have real talk. Mm -hmm. And so that was a, a wonderful time and we'll do it again next month. Um, today is May, it's, it's hard to believe it's May 1st already. Mm -hmm. Ne join us next week for Mother's Day. Mother's Day is next week, right? Yes, next Sunday. Wow. Yes. yes, and so we'll, uh, you know, we'll, we'll move it out as much as we can. We'll have a screen in there. And if we have to have a screen downstairs, you know, being limited and not being outside is not going to stop us from bringing the word of God. And it's not going to stop us from bringing how many people we want to have for that service. So, so, so please join us for our Mother's, Mother's Day service next week. Anything else that I'm, forget, I'm forgetting? I just want to give the saints some perspective on, on, on things. Um, you know, we had such a powerful service for Resurrection Sunday, and I know some people are probably wondering, why, why, why aren't we there every Sunday or whatever? One, mm -hmm. the, the, it seems like since COVID, you know, places that rent out their space have Gone up artificially raised it like three times yeah. mm -hmm. what, what it is. So we have to make a business decision as much as we want to bring the word of God. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. if you get in charge of thousand dollars and you're bringing in less than that, then it has to come from somewhere. Right. Right. That's right? right. So yeah. we're, we're still determined to bring forth the word of God. We're still yeah. looking for places yeah. to make sure that um, we can all get together and everybody feels comfortable coming into the space. And then we're even making plans with, 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 within our own home to provide for more. Yeah. But, you know, God, God's word is going to go forth. Regardless. And we want you and we want you all to That's know right. that and we're determined. It's That's just right. that. No, we're not giving up. That's right. Amen. This word ministers on so many levels right. to us. And we're going to remain steadfast mm -hmm. in, in finding somebody that honor and give us, you know, what we perceive to be fair rent. Yeah. And even the hotel that we were at, yeah. they haven't been willing to relinquish space because sometimes they have a lot of weddings there right. and they get room nights mm. and can and right. need that room. Mm. So there's other op there's other obstacles, but God, we serve a God that can remove and, 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 and do everything. But I wanted to let you all know That's so that you ever you, you, you're never wondering, well, why are we still in, you know, doing this? We're doing the best we can. <laughs> Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 We're doing the best we can. Amen. Amen. And I'm just going to say this. Elton does not miss Bible study. I know. We love Amen. it. Amen. Amen. Well, I, you know, on that note, if there are no more announcements, let's stand and, 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 and pray and uh, close us out.
Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for this word that came forth with boldness, clarity, and conviction. It truly was a heard word, Father God. It ministered to my soul and hopefully it ministered to your soul. Lord, that we are continuing to be steadfast in our faith and that we will not shrink back, that we will be the disciples that you've called us to be in every asset, every aspect of our lives, Father God, every sphere of influence that we will rise up and be the disciples that you've called us to be by being the sermon that people want to see rather than hear that will bring people to Christ. That is what we are charged to do, Lord. So let our actions be pleasing unto you. Let what, what comes out of our mouth be pleasing unto you, Lord. We thank you for what you're doing and through us in and through us. We thank you for this ACC family that continues to be faithful, Father God, that we don't take them for granted, that we love them, Father God, and we appreciate them. Lord, we thank you for those who tune in, that could tune in to other folks, but tune in to us. So we will continue to advance your kingdom forcefully as we do what you've called us to do. So it is this that we pray in the mighty and precious name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen and amen. amen. God, bless God bless you. you. We, we love, love you. you. We'll see you next week. Amen. Amen.